Okay, so before we get started today, I wanted to just respond to, um, I've been getting a lot of comments about this poster behind me, people saying that it's crooked, and I guess it's like, I don't know, setting off their OCD or something. Um, but I, I'm not sure what... Oh, yeah, I see it. All right, yeah, okay, so sorry to all the people whose day I apparently ruined because of this. Hang on, let me fix this. There, better. <laughs> Mark Hoffman asked, seeing as how sea level is influenced by Earth's rotational velocity, could it be theoretically plausible that encroaching ocean waters might be mitigated through reducing the Earth's rotation? I would describe this as a really clever, terrible idea. Clever because you're right, the Earth does have a bit of a bulge in the middle because of the centrifugal force from the Earth's rotation, which is about 1,000 miles an hour at the equator. Or 460 meters per second, which somehow sounds crazier to me. So yeah, all that mass gets flung out because of the rotation, meaning the sea level is a bit higher, closer to the equator than at the poles. So yeah, it, it does stand to reason that if you slow down the rotation, the water level would lower and maybe even counteract the sea level rise we're seeing from climate change. Great success. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> Okay, without even getting into exactly how we would, you know, alter the Earth's rotational speed, I'll let you guys fight about that in the comments. There are a few problems with this idea. Um, first of all, all that water has to go somewhere, and that somewhere would be in the upper latitudes. So yeah, that water would go down around the equator, but it would rise precipitously around the poles. But you're probably saying, Joe, of course you're right about that, like you always are, but you're forgetting that there's a lot more people living around the equator and the temperate zones than there are at the poles. Eat that, brain boy! To which I would say, really, brain boy? That's your worst insult? And then you would say, no, that's just what came to me in the moment. I could do a lot worse if I had a minute. And then I'd go, oh, like you had a brain glitch? And then you'd be all like, yeah, shut up. And then I'd say, oh my God, I'm the same way. Like the other day I was introducing a friend to this other group of friends and I just totally blanked on this one guy that I've been friends with for like 10 years. It was, it was like it just fell out of my head. And you'd be like, I know, right? Like, what's that about? And we'd have a laugh about it and we'd become friends. <laughs> But back to this terrible idea of yours. First of all, there are still a lot of people living along coastlines in higher latitudes that are already dealing with sea level rise, uh, like Amsterdam. You know, like something like this would just do it in completely. Not to mention all the river systems that would be overwhelmed with ocean water, flooding cities way inland and destroying millions of acres of cropland with briny seawater. That could lead to food shortages. I mean, plus there's the way this would disrupt ocean currents, which would create all kinds of chaos in our weather systems. It might push more warm water up into the Arctic, melting even more sea ice, which might completely undo the effect we were going for in the first place. But believe it or not, that's, that, that's just the beginning of the problem. Because a slower rotation means longer days. Longer days means the Earth's surface gets exposed to the sun for longer, heating up the surface even more during the day and cooling it off even more at night, leading to hotter days, colder nights, which would probably lead to weather disruptions. But the worst part is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not just the water that experiences this centrifugal bulge, the land does too. Keep in mind the surface of the Earth is just a bunch of thin plates like floating around on a giant sea of magma. So if we slow down the Earth's rotation and the land around the equator goes down and the land of the poles expand outwards, that's a lot of bending and flexing between those plates, which we would experience as massive earthquakes and volcanic eruptions all over the place as magma squeezes out between these joints. So now you have dozens, maybe hundreds of volcanoes spewing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, further warming the planet, or the exact opposite effect, it'll just cover the entire planet in a haze of ash, blot out the sun, and then we got a snowball Earth for 100,000 years. Did I mention this is a terrible idea? But if you're totally dedicated to this idea, uh, you're in luck because the Earth's rotation is naturally slowing down. It's got to do with gravitational friction from the moon, not worth going into, but yeah, Earth's day is increasing by 1.8 milliseconds per 100 years. So yeah, just wait about 5 million years. Problem solved. Donna Sawyer asks, Solar engines, moving our sun through the universe. I've been seeing a lot on that recently, so I wasn't sure if there's been some new breakthrough. No? Unless somebody's invented a von Neumann probe that I haven't heard of. So yeah, a stellar engine is a massive, like, Dyson sphere sized mega project that would require millions of autonomous drones and probes to accomplish over several centuries. We'd have to mine every single asteroid in the solar system and probably Mercury. Mercury's a goner. We're, we're, we're going to totally dismantle Mercury someday. So many of you have seen this Kurzgesagt video on stellar thrusters. Um, I'm assuming many of you have seen this. It got 16 million views. 
as I'm sure so will this video. But in that video, they talk about the Shkadov thruster, which is the most well-known type of stellar engine. It's a simple idea. Basically, you create a giant parabolic mirror, you put it on one side of the star, and it bounces all the photons and energy from that side of the star in the opposite direction, creating a thrust that moves the star slowly over time. There's no moving parts, there's no energy required to run it. All you have to do is build a giant mirror, roughly one and a half times the diameter of the sun, which is 109 times the diameter of Earth. We may need more than Mercury, but given enough time and enough planets, <laughs> You know, some future super intelligent AI that's wiped out humanity could possibly build something like this and make it possible to scoot our solar system around the galaxy. The reason why they'd want to do this would be to avoid a collision with another star or maybe a supernova in the future, or say we found a habitable planet in another solar system, preferably a younger star, we could kind of mosey over closer to it and make a new home there. Might give us the ability to outlast our own sun. And by us, of course, I mean the technology that replaces us. There are some other ideas for this, like in that Karzysak video, they talk about a concept called the Kaplan thruster that would basically feed off of the sun and create thrust by fusing helium into oxygen and then push against the sun with hydrogen jets. This is more complicated. I mean, it's, it's a giant Earth-sized engine burning at billions of degrees for hundreds of thousands of years. So I have a skeptical, but it would move us around a lot faster. So there's that. And there are other stellar engine ideas, but I mean, this is this is a this is a project that would take tens of thousands of years at least to build and literally millions of years for it to actually move us around the solar system the way we want. So that's why I say th there's no way that the human race would be able to do this. I mean, we just we clearly cannot think that long term as a species. This is a project for some future species or whatever advanced technology replaces us. I hope they have fun with it. As for why you have been seeing more about this lately, I mean, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, sometimes these subjects tend to just trend suddenly for no reason. As far as I know, there hasn't been any new breakthrough on this idea, but I could be wrong. My big question is, would it be more likely that we would develop warp drive technology uh, to move around the galaxy and the universe? My bet is that we would develop that before we can make this happen. But yeah, you guys tell me what you think in the comments. Speaking of warp drives, Mike Reed asked, if we ever achieve warp drive and travel away from Earth, would it be possible to use a telescope and peer back into Earth's history? Uh, actually, yeah. Yeah, I think we could. Because yeah, if warp drive is faster than light, then wherever we stopped, we could turn around and look back, and the light that was hitting us would be from the past at that point. Now, we would need a very large telescope to be able to actually discern anything from Earth from that far away, um, but that's just a technical issue. I, I mean, I imagine if we can make warp drive a thing, we could figure that out. I mean, it would be like us being able to visualize aliens on an exoplanet right now. I mean, it would, it, would be, it would be that level of telescope. Now, another interesting thought is that if you were looking backwards as you were traveling in warp speed, would you see time go in reverse? Actually, I guess not. I, I guess if, if space time was literally being warped around you, you wouldn't, well, I don't know. Maybe Brilliant has a course on this. I know they've got one on gravitational physics. So yeah, right here in the classical mechanics course, you can scroll down past the Newtonian stuff and you get to reference frames, relativity, that kind of thing. Actually, they've got a whole course here on special relativity that's in collaboration with Minute Physics. Uh, this is something else they've been doing a lot on Brilliant lately. They've been uh, working alongside other creators like Real Engineering, Sabina Hassenfelder. So as you can see, it kind of starts with these fun animations and kind of sets up the whole thing. Got a nice little scroll bar at the top so you can see how far along you're going. So this sets up the whole idea of relativity. As you can see, if you're on the water, you're moving slower than the guy in the balloon. So his motion relative to you is different from an outside observer. I would say u divided by t. Incorrect. u times t. So I got it wrong and it shows you the explanation right here to kind of explain to you why you got it wrong. But that's what's kind of cool about Brilliant is it asks you to uh, solve problems and by solving problems it kind of hacks your brain's natural ability to learn how to do this stuff in a way that some teacher at a chalkboard might not have been able to do. Brilliant does sponsor this channel by the way so if you go to brilliant.org slash answers with Joe you'll get 20% off your annual membership just saying. Oh and 30 days free I kind of didn't even realize they did that so you get 30 days free and then after that it's 20% off for the rest of the year. It's pretty cool. They got a ton of different courses everything from advanced calculus to quantum computing, I mean, all the stuff that you ever wanted to learn. And you can start as early and uh, as far back as you like, depending on where your, your level is. I mean, there's like fundamentals of math, which is pretty much where I need to start. Logic puzzles, pre-algebra puzzles. Like, this is just a fun way to grow your brain. 
who even gets into the physics of how to throw an axe? By giving the center of mass in that position. See, that, that, that's, that's really cool. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot I was recording a video here. Brilliance that good. Anyway, it's brilliant.org slash answers with Joe. Play around with it for 30 days. See if you like it. I think you will. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, I know this is a little bit of a more abbreviated uh, lightning round than usual. I'm actually kind of doing a little bit of traveling right now, so I'm kind of trying to keep things simple. Um, that's the thing about being married to a teacher. That's the only time that we can travel is during the summer. But thank you guys for watching. If you want to see the last lightning round video where I answer questions from Patreon supporters, I'll put that right up here. Um, if this is your first time here, then maybe check out any of the other recommendations that YouTube may be giving you that have my face in the thumbnail. Give them a click if you like them. I do invite you to subscribe. I come back with videos every Monday. Man, this poster is just, just keeps getting worse. <laughs> Perfect. Anyway, you guys go out there, have an eye-opening rest of the week. Stay safe. I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys.